I love the film, by the way. I'm sure you've heard that. Oh. Well. Um, it was great. I think I, I saw it just before Christmas when everything was quite dark and miserable and it really tapped into <laughs> the whole feeling of the, of the world at that time. Um, but I'm going to begin by asking what it was that attracted you uh, to, to let him go. So uh, Tom reached out and wanted to have breakfast and uh, a director making that kind of contact always is um, very flattering uh, for an actor. <laughs> um, and when we got to breakfast, uh, the conversation between Tom and I was just immediately very easy. Um, I'd read the script at that point only Diane was attached and uh, it was inspiring to me that Tom had made a thriller about motherhood as I saw it and uh, generational trauma and that he was doing it from a lens that that, that seemed very focused on the different types of uh, maternity that exist. So that was, that was extremely intriguing to me. And the prospect of working with Diane was a, was a big tick as well. Yeah, I mean, it's a great role, isn't it, for you? I mean, she, she's kind of underestimated by the other characters in the film, but also by the audience, I think, as well. Oh yeah, there's a line that uh, Leslie's character has about how um, Diane's lucky that I'm not a mother bear. And I, I remember reading that and being so, uh, feeling so frustrated for Lorna that she wasn't seen to be that way because to me so clearly she would do anything to, uh, to throw herself in harm's way to protect this child, which is the definition for me of a mother bear. And I was sort of very protective of of that um, that belief about her, and frustrated that other people in in the world of the film didn't see her as strong. Hmm. Yeah, she has a remarkable inner strength. I thought. Do you, when you play characters like this, or, or any or any character for, for that matter, do you, do you find that you learn from them or take things from them? You know, because I guess when you're embodying characters that have all these kind of positive traits about them, is it do they sometimes rub off on you in a good way? It's impossible not to take them with you a little bit, which is all, always a thing when I read a script, if I'm not immediately like challenged or scared or I, I don't see how I'm gonna walk away a changed or better actor from the experience, then I generally say no. Um, it's a pass for me if I don't think that something about this person is going to shift my perspective. Um, and so that always has to be a piece of it. And with Lorna, Every time I, I step into a period that is not present day, I learn so much about what it is to be a woman now and uh, about the opportunities that I have and also the things that I want to create for younger women. Um, and so that's the thing that with Lorna really stuck with me is is the limitations of her and what she does anyway. Yeah, she had nowhere really to to turn. I mean, like if we compare to like today's circumstances where there'd be so many avenues, you'd, you'd think. Yeah, and even when there are so many avenues, you still, I think, are afraid to face judgment mm -hmm. um, of, of the relationship that you're in. I mean, I, I don't know anybody who hasn't been in a toxic relationship but stayed a little bit longer than they wanted to because they, they felt they should or they were afraid to be judged by friends or family. Um, that toxicity holds people for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it must be sort of fascinating thing to kind of tackle because obviously when you get kind of period films and films that seem like they're in a whole different world to the one we have now, but you had, I guess, this incredibly human trait to, to ta tackle onto. And, and I was just wondering when it comes to like tackling um, uh, like domestic abuse on screen, how important is it to be very delicate, but yet at the same time to be very raw and very honest. So that kind of balance of sensitivity and yet at the same time one, not wanting to kind of pull any punches to show exactly what it is. 
I freed myself immediately of the expectation to do anything in the right way because every woman who has ever experienced intimate partner violence has an entirely different experience with that. Um, I read a book called No Visible Bruises during filming. It had it had just been released, and I found it really impactful uh, because it was it it was written from the perspective of multiple families who have been through it and who have uh, um, have been families of both the victim and the uh, intimate partner who was abusing them. And that perspective, the family's perspective is extremely helpful because nine times out of 10, the reason that women left, which is often the most critical time and the possibility of violence is the highest when women leave or anybody who is in a relationship to occur to women but highest rate violence and because they don't want to uh, become an abuser and that really kind of twisted into that line that Lorna has in the diner about not wanting him to be like them that that is the scariest thing to her not her own safety but him growing up to be a man like that yeah you, you mentioned obviously that the theme of matern um, being maternal which is such a core kind of theme mm -hmm. that runs through this movie um that must be quite easy to tap into when you're working with children working with kids because i guess you must create a bond i mean obviously with any co-star you work with you must always create these kind of bonds but it must be especially close and quite unique when you're working with um with kids and children Oh, they keep you honest. I mean, <laughs> there's no room for, uh, you can't really sink into any sort of like actory drama or process. You, they, they keep you minute to minute, very honest. And those boys had never done a film before. So uh, it makes you even more excited to go to work when they're discovering what a set is like for the first time, or they're watching someone do a stunt and they are, watching the the way it unfolds with magic and wonder in their eyes it, it really takes away any tendency to like bitch and moan as it were <laughs> about work yeah. uh, you mentioned at the start of the interview that working with diane was a huge draw i mean now you've done it how, how i'm assuming it it was everything you wanted it to be and more yeah it was at university uh she came to mine and gave a, a speech when I was a student she talked to us and uh she like strolled in the room in like converse and a, a slouchy sweater and just really connected to us um from a place of no ego and I just always thought she seemed so effortless and then getting to watch her work there's so much she's she's doing and she could probably do any job on that set. She could really honestly be the boom operator or she could she could do any job on a film set. And to watch her uh, work was extremely engaging um, and made me think a lot about what I wanna do beyond just acting. Did you, um, did you tell her that, that she'd been into your university? Did you remind her of that encounter? I did. I think we, we were eating dinner or something and, and uh, she would have had no reason to remember it. But um, I did tell her that we had met before and this was kismet. <laughs> So I'm just, I'm running out of time. So I was going to ask you just quickly, because um, yeah. you worked, but well, obviously it's not just Diane, Kevin Costner, Leslie yeah. Manfield. But in, in those moments when you're standing in a room and you've got all three or this incredible kind of ensemble around you, do your, does your mind ever just kind of go, oh shit, this is really cool? Or, you, or, do you have, or is, that, is that a disservice to the character you're playing that you have to kind of push those to one side? It, it does occur to me all the time, but I quickly shove it down. With Leslie, we got her pretty late in the game. And when I found out it was going to be her, I thought, oh, we just, I, I'm not sure everybody knows 
what this film just turned into because we have her now. Um, and, and everybody sort of felt that way when she walked into the room, like this has just become a different movie because she, she fits so perfectly into the puzzle. So just very quickly before I do go, because um, obviously I, you, you were fantastic and, and a big part of Mrs. America. I know it was a mini series, so it's very unlikely, but is there any chance we'll get a second season or could this buck the trend of the mini series one off? So are, are we all done, do you think? We would all uh, we would all uh, just clamor to work together again. I'm not even sure that you could get all of those people's schedules to work at the same time. It was such a meticulous process to get all of those people free at the same time um, that we're very happy with what it said about where we are uh, in history and that history is still happening with the ERA. It is not yet ratified. Um, into the Constitution. So I think that the way that we left it, we felt very strongly about, but I uh, will work with any of those women and men at any given point in time. So just call me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time today, Kaylee. Much appreciated. Thank you. Best of luck with everything you've got going on this year. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!